During the 21st century, a massive nuclear exchange was recorded in human history. Large swathes of the planet were left uninhabitable, and even in the 3300s, the effects of this war are still being felt. Few areas of the globe would escape this war. The victors of this conflict gazed at the prize they had fought and died for, the irradiated wastelands of planet Earth. Grave concern was for the fate of humanity. Witnessing the reality of a thermonuclear exchange, the survivors of this war, known to them as World War III, set about motions that would see our race spreading across the inner Orion Spur. Firstly, humanity would venture to the Moon and to Mars to establish settlements away from our wounded planet. It was surmised that if Earth was to suffer another cataclysmic moment, one that may jeopardise the human race's existence, these settlements will guarantee our survival. Yet one problem existed to the leaders of the day. The planets and moons that inhabited our solar system were not capable of naturally supporting the needs of the human body, similar to our birthplace. Harking back to the days of Columbus, who would ponder past his new, humanity set its eyes upon the stars and set about the preparation of our ascent into the heavens. These journeys across seas of black would be a near impossible feat for the distance between our own solar system and the nearest star that contained an Earth-like world were gargantuan. It was decided that at great effort and expense, our engineers and scientists would set about the construction of what are now known as the generation ships. The term for these vessels itself is telling to how these early interstellar explorers would reach their destinations. The crew of each vessel would live aboard these hulks of steel and polymer for the remainder of their adult lives, sacrificing their legacies in the hope that their offspring would live beyond the horizon. Taking into consideration even the bravest pilots and most professional crewmen, that old enemy, human nature, would lurk in the dim lit decks of the generation ship, twisting and subverting the original mission of each vessel until failure was an escape from the horrors that bestowed the decks of these ships. Many years later, many of these vessels would drift into now inhabited space, as though like a ghost from the past. The crews forsaken to the unknowable depths of the void. The generation ships are large vessels found in various locations within Elite Dangerous. Similar to a megaship in size, these vessels can be scanned to find logs that reveal the fate of each of their crew. Prior to the invention of FTL travel, a great effort was embarked upon to break the boundaries of our solar system, and it was through generation ships that humanity saw a way to achieve this task. Equipped with sublight drives, cryostasis, and a self-sustaining environment, the generation ship was designed to house hundreds of thousands of crew and colonists as they crept across the void between stars in an attempt to reach habitable worlds similar to Earth. Over their period of use, a massive effort was undertaken to make as many of these ships as possible, and presumably was at the time the greatest construction initiative ever undertaken by humanity. One by one, these vessels were fired out of our solar system to various locations in the vicinity known to contain Earth-like worlds, or at least worlds capable of supporting humans. It is unknown how many generation ships were made, but estimates range in the thousands. The complete fate of every generation ship made is unknown, but some of them have been found wandering the cosmos, like ghosts from another time. Even if these vessels were to travel 20% of the speed of light, their journeys would take many hundreds of years at least. With this taken into consideration, this is why they have only recently turned up. When approached and scanned, these vessels reveal the tales of these early pioneers and it seems that almost all of these vessels' crews had met a grisly end. Exploring the stories of each of their crews is one of the highlights of the game. They contain some of the most accomplished writing and voice acting that can be found within Elite Dangerous. Each of the names of these vessels take from ancient mythology or polytheism, 
demonstrate more hints of the influences of our original creator. All hail his blessed name, Braven. Some of the stories told at these types of sites explore some of the well-known themes of ships hypothesized in reality. As with many ships and technology within Elite Dangerous, the creators of this game have chosen theorized methods for interstellar travel and have implemented them in the game. The typical way one of these generation ships would theoretically operate would be to have a large ship, large enough to house and support many thousands of crew drift through space in order to reach extremely far away places suitable for life. They often would use cryostasis pods to keep the majority of the crew in preservation. Outside of the game, the typical way one of these generation ships would theoretically operate would be to have a large ship, large enough to house and support many thousands of crew, drift through space in order to reach extremely far away places suitable for life. They often would use cryostasis pods to keep the majority of the crew in preservation, using the skeletal crew to keep the ship operating as intended. Once at the location, these ships would be broken down in order to use the parts as a foundation of a new colony. Ships of these types, within fiction, are often used to tell tales of human nature and how humanity reacts to hardship, positively or negatively. Personally, some of the offerings on Netflix for me have been somewhat subpar and in the past few years there's been a rush of movies or series that explore sub-like colonisation vessels. One exception to this, however, is Pandoricum, a horror movie set aboard a sublight colonization vessel similar to the events of the Fetis. I have theorized in the past that at least one of these generation ships has a larger connection to the main plot of Elite Dangerous, but I think that most of the others are one-off stories that explore different themes, or might I add to exceptional quality. Often does this game contain some of the dark themes that sci-fi writers have explored in movies, books or series. I think these sites are no exception and I think that more of these types of horror sci-fi experiences are absolutely necessary if Elite Dangerous is to mature as a game and a story. Anyway, go out there, use the addresses I have provided in the description below to explore some of these stories if you like the horror side of science fiction. It is worth it. What is your favourite generation ship in the game? Comment below and let me know your thoughts on this topic. Thank you for the watch. I would like to thank the official member of the channel, David Gate. If you would like to back the channel via coffee or become a member and watch some exclusive videos, either follow the membership option below or the coffee link in the description. Please make sure to hit the like if you enjoyed this video. Until next time, Commanders, 07.